So I love taking photos, but I'm definitely more an amateur than a professional. Currently I use Fujifilm X-T20, which is the mirrorless camera I'm speaking to right now. But before I got the camera, I was using an iPhone 10 to take all of my photos. And I was editing them mostly using Apple Photos, which actually has quite decent photo editing features, especially on the Mac where you can edit using curves as well as adjust things like white balance. But for more advanced editing or editing photos that I took using an app called Helite that allows you to take photos in RAW, I was using Visco, which is a quite popular app for applying filters and so on. But of course, after switching to a mirrorless camera, I wanted to find an app that would allow me to process way bigger RAW files than I used to do it with an iPhone. Therefore, I started using Adobe Lightroom CC, which works on all web, desktop and mobile. And not only that, but I also started using an iPad Pro to edit most of my photos. And today I would like to tell you a bit more about how I use Lightroom CC on the iPad Pro. The most important thing before we even start editing photos is getting them from your camera to the iPad. And in that case, it's very easy, especially after the iPad OS introduction and after a recent update to Lightroom that allows you to directly import the photos without opening any other app. So first of all, with introduction of iPad OS 13, Apple gave an option to access external drives and SD cards using the Files app. And that allows you to simply plug an SD card reader to your iPad and then get all of the photos out of the card into your iPad. And here, even if you don't have one of the newer iPad Pros with USB-C, you can still use an SD card reader with lighting cable. Using the Files app, you can either just browse all the photos on the SD card and share them to Lightroom or move them onto your iPad's memory. And here you can also move all of your photos into one of the supported services like Google Drive or Dropbox. But for those of you who also use Lightroom, there is much a better way and that's simply just by opening the app. So once you're in Lightroom and you connect an either SD card reader or your camera, all of your photos are going to appear on the screen. And it works exactly the same as you would do it on a Mac where you can simply select the photos that you want to import into Lightroom. And what's really cool about this solution is that even if you don't have storage on your iPad, the photos will be simply synced into Adobe Creative Cloud and you'll be editing smart previews. So in my case, I have 64 gigabytes of storage on my iPad, but I am still able to access all of my photos from Creative Cloud. The next step after importing the photos is of course to select those that you want to keep and edit. And actually that's something I really like using the iPad for because you can simply swipe up to mark photo as your favorite or swipe down if you want to reject it. So it's kind of like Tinder, but for photos that you're importing from your camera. And that on its own makes iPad a great selection tool for editing photos. The first thing I do after I select all the photos I want to keep is to apply presets and profiles. So since I'm using X-T20, Fujifilm cameras come with a really nice color profiles that I can simply select in Lightroom. And they're also very easy to access using Lightroom on iPad and I can simply just go to profiles and select one of them and apply it to my photo. And in the same menu, I can also access profiles that were provided by Adobe. And as for presets that you already imported on Lightroom on your desktop, they should be already available as long as they're synced using Adobe Creative Cloud. Otherwise, there is no simple way to import your presets. You have to always use the Lightroom CC app on your desktop. But again, once you have them in your Creative Cloud, it's very simple to apply them. You have to simply open the presets tab on the right sidebar and from there, you can simply select the presets that you want to apply on the photo. As for editing, I don't find it to be very much different than on the Mac and actually it's way more pleasant to use on this device. And to be honest, I also didn't find too many things to be missing from Lightroom CC on the Mac. Although here I have to mention that I never really used Lightroom Classic that has way more features than Lightroom CC. And for me personally, the only thing missing that I find to be quite annoying is geotagging that my camera doesn't support. So normally if I would like to assign a location to my photo, I would simply open Lightroom CC on the desktop and there just type in the address manually. But as for editing using sliders, it's actually super simple and it works exactly the same as on the Mac. You can even tap the sliders on the left or the right side to adjust them by small increments. On the Mac you can also adjust sliders using keyboard shortcuts, but it doesn't really work on the iPad. So if you hold the command key there is a few shortcuts that are supported, but the list is very short and it doesn't compare to the Lightroom CC on desktop at all. 
But there is one thing in the iPad version of Lightroom that Mac doesn't even have start for, and that's selective editing using Apple Pencil. It's just so simple to grab the pencil and select part of the photo I would like to edit. And of course, you can also use the Apple Pencil for retouching. The last thing to mention here is exporting, and I found it to be a little bit of hit and miss on the iPad. Sometimes I just have to keep the device awake, otherwise it's going to pause the export. And the same goes for keeping the app in the foreground, otherwise the export can completely stop and you have to start over. I really enjoy using Lightroom CC on the iPad and I think it's a great tool for travelers. My 11 inch iPad Pro is way easier to carry than 16 inch MacBook Pro and also I can watch Netflix in offline here and that makes it perfect for editing photos in an airplane and then I can simply just chill and watch something. And that's simply not possible on the Mac where there is no Netflix app. So not only I have a great multimedia device but I can also enjoy it for work. And with the Apple Pencil and with the addition of the smart key Board, I can really achieve a lot using Lightroom and all the other apps on the iPad. There is still a few things missing in the iPad version of Lightroom, but I think they're gonna show up at some point. And I'm also very excited to see how the Photoshop support is going to look like once it's out. And yeah, here are my thoughts about using Lightroom on the iPad. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm an amateur. I only take photos for myself. I don't work as a professional, but I find editing on the iPad very pleasant. And I think that for a lot of people who casually edit photos, and that's the most powerful thing that they do with their laptop. iPad is really a great replacement and they can achieve way more using the Apple Pencil, for example. So yeah, let me know what are your thoughts down below and feel free to subscribe and leave a comment. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.